Good morning again, ready for the third talk of uh, the uh, academic track at State of the Map. We have here Ali Shiba and Moritz. Ali Shiba uh, comes from the University of Bonn and Moritz is from uh, the Heidelberg University. And they will present another very interesting talk, I think, for the whole community and not just for researchers, which is a bit the spirit of the academic track on how we could potentially integrate OSM data and Wikidata with a specific case study on railways. Please. Thank you for the introduction, uh, Marco. Yeah. So, yeah, we are here to talk about the testing of analysis of the integration potential between OpenStreetMap and Wikidata. I'm pretty sure here everybody knows what OSM is. So I'll start with what knowledge graphs are. So knowledge graphs are rich sources of semantic information. We have mainly real world entities, their types or classes, and their properties or attributes or uh, relations. And one interesting thing about knowledge graph is that it just doesn't have the entity information, but the other entities is linked to. So it's kind of this huge uh, link data, and it creates the uh, graph, which is really rich in uh, information. There are uh, many, like the, the research has been uh, growing and growing, and there have been many general purpose knowledge graphs which have come up. Uh, I think uh, here everybody may have heard the name Wikidata. Uh, there is DBpedia, which is kind of the uh, Wikipedia version of uh, knowledge graph. And then there is the uh, Yago, and other many uh, general purpose knowledge graphs are coming up. Then there are domain specific knowledge graphs, which are uh, curated by uh, maybe uh, specific personalities or they are uh, generated from this general purpose knowledge graph. So let's say if I want to create a knowledge graph just about people, then I can uh, query the Wikidata knowledge graph just for the class people or class person, and then I can have this domain specific knowledge graph. Uh, yeah, the domain which uh, deals with like or uh, is most inter interesting for all of us is the geographic knowledge uh, domain. And in geographic knowledge graphs, we have certain examples like Link Geo data, Yagoto Geo, and World KG, which is from our uh, research group. So why can't we use uh, these knowledge graphs directly for our uh, information need when we are dealing with uh, geographic data? So the general purpose knowledge graphs do not have much information about geographic entities. Uh, they're very limited, and the coordinates are normally point data. They do not deal with lines or uh, polygons. The domain-specific knowledge, graph, knowledge graphs are uh, many times just uh, restricted to certain types. So they can be just about administrative, administrative boundaries or about uh, recreational events, and they do not actually cover whole of the uh, world. So that's why we cannot use them, and uh, we need this whole source of uh, geographic data, which is semantically as well as uh, geographically rich. Uh, for our research, uh, we have chosen Wikidata Knowledge Graph, not only because it's like one of the biggest uh, sources right now of uh, like biggest uh, knowledge graph, but also it contains links to uh, from uh, OpenStreetMap, and it gets easier for the analysis. So yeah, it is from Wikimedia Foundation and currently has like uh, around, I think, uh, nine, uh, yeah, 90 million entities. Yeah, and it, it, the interesting fact about it is that it is created and edited by humans as well as uh, machines, and also used uh, automatically by machines. Uh, yeah. Uh, so for example, here this uh, cycling in it board, it creates the uh, cycling related events automatically on uh, Wikidata. So there are many bots which are used for creation and addition of uh, the entities. It has the semantic representation, of course, and the uh, representation is in format of uh, triples. So that's like the common knowledge graph uh, format uh, from uh, like idea format. And we have the subject, predicate, and object, where subject is the entity of interest. Then we have the predicates, like uh, attributes uh, or properties. And then we have the object. And here, object can either be a literal value or an another entity, which you can uh, link to the current entity. So for example, here we have this Florence capital of Tuscany or Florence country Italy. So coming to the differences between OpenStreetMap and Wikidata, at schema level, it, yeah, it, the, the difference is uh, really vast. We have the, on OpenStreetMap side, we can actually add new tags and keys at uh, any given time. And that's why the schema is not fixed. It is really rich, but heterogeneous. And it is not directly accessible by the semantic applications and uh, technologies such as Sparkle. Yeah. 
On the other hand side, we have uh, Wikidata where we have the fixed schema. Here you can see the example, uh, the instance of property, which is which tells the class of the uh, entity, uh, similar to the primary tag of uh, on the OSM side. And because this uh, this uh, property is well defined. It's really easy to know the class of the entity just by looking at this property. And then we also have this class hierarchy. Um, then the linking part. So OSM uh, links to Wikidata using the Wikidata tag and currently has around 2.5 uh, million uh, linked entities. On Wikidata side, of course, it's not uh, the same. We have around just 1,000 uh, entities linked from Wikidata to OSM, and it does make sense because on OpenStreetMap site, we have the non-stable ID problem. So of course, if we have the backlinks it, and the link changes, uh, the ID changes, then the link can change. And another thing is on OpenStreetMap site, of course, we have uh, much more information just uh, than like the coordinate information or the primary tags, but it doesn't have uh, time-related information, like temporal uh, aspect or additional information. So it does make sense that we have the linking from the map to the uh, additional information source. Yeah, then uh, why we are doing this, right? So how this can help uh, the integration and what are the steps? So uh, the first step is to link the schema elements. So right now, if I look at the, uh, the example I have here is that natural equal to peak and uh, mountains. So if I give this to any linguistic model, it's really difficult to identify this with any of the Levenstein distance or some of the sim uh, string similarity approaches because there is nothing common. And uh, so we have developed an approach where we use the existing entity, uh, linked entities to automatically infer these uh, alignments between the classes and tags. Then another, uh, after the we have the links between the schema elements, we go to the linking entities, and uh, currently we just have 2.5 million entities, but we have a lot of data present on both sides, and linking is an ongoing process. Um, and we also have a, another approach where we try to predict these links automatically using the already linked data. So it tries to match the tags and coordinate information to get the uh, links. But uh, the disadvantage is that we just can apply this currently to the entities where the coordinate information is present from the Wikidata site. Once we have this uh, links, uh, like links between the schema elements as well as between the entities, the integration is quite uh, simple and can be done easily. So how then how this can benefit uh, both the sources? On OSM site, we do have a lot of data, but it's not directly accessible to semantic applications. So OSM can benefit uh, from this wide semantic uh, information for the downstream applications as well. And so like using OSM as base, we can uh, create uh, many, uh, uh, many applications for the question answering systems or uh, geographic information retrieval systems, or even for visualization. On Wikidata side, we can benefit from the correctness uh, of the, or the precise geo coordinates uh, OSM offers. And it is actually beneficial for both the communities, the GIS or the semantic web community, because the source which we will have after integration will be complete and correct in terms of semantic as well as geographic uh, aspect. So we have seen uh, what knowledge graphs are, how they differ, and what they can, uh, how they can be helpful. Uh, we have uh, one approach where we actually uh, created a knowledge graph. So this is World Kitchen Knowledge Graph uh, from uh, DSIS Group uh, in Bonn. So this is the knowledge graph based on World Kichi, uh, on OSM, and we tried to create the class hierarchy from uh, map features. So as you can see here, we have. Uh, cave entrance, and that is the subclass of uh, class natural. And the links which we have got from uh, between the schema elements are also presented here using the OWL equivalent class. So this is kind of the semantic representation of OSM. Of course, it's an ongoing work. We currently just have node data, and uh, it's the, the links between the schema elements are also, like not all links are added. So, but this is kind of the work which we have. Um, and we would like to integrate it with uh, other knowledge graphs as well as OSM to make it a better source. 
so to we we have understood that there is a need of a need for integration but how do we analyze this so that's the goal of our work that we actually come up with uh, uh, comparative uh, comparative uh, parameters to see which of the sources or which of the classes we can actually integrate and to what extent uh, osm and wikidata are not just comparable with the data aspect but also with the community so the both communities i think we have also heard in the past that uh, like in past two days that uh, many of the community members are overlapping and so and the structure is also similar like they also have the distribution framework which is uh, a contribution framework which is uh, kind of similar so this uh, work will help in identifying the potential uh, integration potential between these two sources and it as i said earlier it will be the closest step towards uh, correctness and completeness and also merging these two communities uh, to make a bigger community with uh, which can actually uh, benefit these sources okay so why did we select railway stations uh, the analysis as a whole is cannot uh, cannot be applied to the data set because the communities differ the data uh, differs the definitions we need to first know which actually are equivalent classes in order to uh, analyze them and in case of railway station it was uh, straightforward that we can see that okay railway station railway halt from osm side is kind of equivalent to the railway station instance of railway station from wiki data and that's why we uh, went forward with railway stations and also another fact that for integration we need to have a significant amount of data present uh, if on wiki data side if we just have like 10 railway stations it's not possible it doesn't make sense to actually merge them together uh, and in uh, railway station we have around 130000 uh, objects in osm and around uh, 100000 objects in wikidata which uh, shows the integration potential so now actually starting the analysis part uh, the first is just the uh, general comparison between the numbers uh, just by looking at the numbers uh, osm has 26% more uh, entities of railway station we divided these uh, into six categories. So OSM with links to Wikidata, Wikidata with links to OSM. We noticed that not all links which are from OSM to Wikidata are railway stations. So many a times they are linked to subway stations or metro stations. So this linking is kind of not perfect and we have categorized that also differently. Then we also have groups uh, on Wikidata where there is no link to OSM, but they have geo coordinates. So in some way, we can actually integrate them. But there are around 6,000 um, entities uh, of railway stations which do, which do not have uh, either geo coordinates or link to OSM. And in that case, the only thing uh, which we can use to um, integrate them is maybe a name or some other tags which are useful for the integration. Okay. Um, yeah, and then the second analysis was the growth rate analysis, how these two uh, have, um, like how railway stations have grown uh, in past on these two communities or in, uh, on these two sources. Um, so we could, of course, OSM has uh, now reached a steady state and maybe it's because that most of the railway stations are already added, but yeah, we see that from 20, mid 2020, there have not been many railway stations that have been added to OSM, but on Wikidata side, it's still uh, growing. We did not see a uh, obvious correlation between these two uh, sources, and we do think that the, at least the railway station people who edit the railway station are maybe independent, meaning that the edit or edit, uh, creation of entity in one source is not followed by uh, in another source. Uh, we also see that the um, links to Wikidata were added much later than the uh, beginning of Wikidata. So Wikidata started in 2012, and uh, we have the links uh, from 2016. So the next part will be carried out by Mod. Yeah, hi, um, thanks. So let's have a lightning talk about uh, the other analysis we did. Um, so we also looked into the regional distribution of this data. So not only have the um, whole global view on, on the data, but also look at the regional distribution. And we can see that um, many countries, like uh, we can see that countries that have a high amount of railway stations in general um, also have a high amount in, in, in both sources, whereas uh, railway station networks that are smaller or uh, medium-sized um, mostly are underrepresented in, in Wikidata. 
Um, but this, this was, don't fool yourself, this is on the log scale in both scales. When you look at it at a linear scale, you can see that there are actually higher discrepancies between the two data sets also in the uh, large um, railway station network. For example, Russia and China um, or the UK have a lot, a, a high amount of data that is different between the two sources. Um, so we can also see that when we now only look at the data that is linked between the two sources, so meaning that OSM railway stations, um, the percentage of uh, stations that are linked to Wikidata, we can see that uh, we have a kind of increase, not a very steady one, but a kind of increase for larger networks, so not large networks seem to be better linked uh, in OSM, whereas in Wikidata, um, there seems to be no correlation between the amount of linked data or the percentage of linked data and the amount of data we have uh, in total. So um, there is a kind of difference. But what about the semantic information we have? Um, so we can see that uh, Wikidata has a lot more information stored with the objects than OS OpenStreetMap has. So the uh, difference between the uh, dark blue OSM objects, which are OSM objects with the link to Wikidata, should only be one to the uh, light blue, which is objects that are not linked to Wikidata. Yet the difference is quite higher. Um, so we somehow see that there are, seem to be main stations that are well mapped in OSM and uh, some other stations that don't have as many tags as these main stations. On the other hand, we see that Wikidata has a lot more tags. Um, so we have an average of uh, 30 tags per, per uh, element in Wikidata. Um, and this is amplified, so we ha not only have a large amount of semantic information, but this is also amplified by the links we have in the knowledge graph, right? So this data we see here on the right in the Wikidata is not only have a lot of semantic information, but also has a lot of links that also have semantic information that we can link to the object. So we have this huge potential there. Um, so for the geometric information, uh, we were kind of surprised that uh, the linked object in OSM had actually um, less polygon area. So um, it, it seems to be that um, smaller stations seem to be more mapped as polygons. Um, and we don't have polygons in Wikidata for railway stations, so this is the high potential for Wikidata to get polygon data from OSM when we have the links. Um, I will try to skip this one because I think this one is more important, the community size between the two projects. I think when we integrate data, we also integrate communities, right? So uh, we also have to look at what type of community are we integrating, and we can see that well, we have more data in OSM, so we also have a bigger community, but what we can see is that um, Wikidata has a large amount of people that edit railway stations in relation to the total amount of people. Um, and this is not in share with the amount of railway stations in Wikidata. So it seems like people are more editing more different types of things uh, in Wikidata. So they're touching all the different types or all the different uh, object types. Um, and when we look, look at the activeness of users, so how much do users contribute, we can see that uh, users in OSM, we have this 99 uh, um, relation in OSM, which you know of, that 90% of the users contribute 10% uh, of the data or even uh, or worse. Whereas in Wikidata, we have uh, quite a high share, or we have many users that, uh, or more users that contribute more data to uh, Wikidata. Um, and what we talked about before about users um, uh, touching different things, um, I think we can also see it uh, kind of here, um, or it, this is a different perspective on, on, a, on a similar topic, where we can see that in OSM, um, people seem to not only map um, railway stations, but seem to touch more things. So this is the share of uh, data uh, of, of railway stations touched by a user of all their contributions. And we can see that in OSM, people touch uh, the percentage of objects touched per user is less in the segment of railway stations as it is for Wikidata. Um, so it seems like they are more diverse, but then again, in OSM, we have more types of data to touch. Um, so that might be a, a reason for that. Yeah, so um, the other is actually just, please, if you come across something, try to map it also uh, in Wikidata when you see it's not mapped, so we can have safe links between Wikidata and OSM. Um, and of course, there are many open questions, like what are the regional data trends and so on. So. Um, we will try to continue our work on this. Thank you for the talk. We have already some questions. Um, let me start with this one. Your example considers a specific physical existing feature object. In case of natural events like floods, landslides, or other natural events, or even old or collapsed buildings, 
Is it possible to assign geometry to Wikidata features even in cases where the feature is not present in OpenStreetMap? Maybe the event applies to areas that are now geometrically different. So we do have uh, some work, uh, ongoing work, where we are trying to connect the events to uh, knowledge graphs and OSM. Uh, in that case, uh, the idea is that if we uh, we do have ge geometries, different geometries in knowledge graphs as well, like we have polygons as well as uh, line string, they are not widely used because the accessibility is reduced. Like we, uh, with Sparkle, uh, which is the uh, language for knowledge graphs, we can access these uh, um, different geometries, but um, it's yeah, it's a bit complicated, uh, of course. Uh, but yes, it it can be uh, yeah done yeah. And it's an ongoing task, of course. Maybe next year we can uh, try to present that one. <laughs> yeah. Of course, we hope to have an academic track as well eh, next year. Um, now we have a question on again the difference between the two um, databases and. Uh, uh, how and if you consider that. So you compare the number of tags per OSM object with the number of links per Wikidata entry. Did you take into account that some information in OSM is not stored as tags, but implicit by the location of the object? Yeah, so we thought about that, and that could be one reason. Uh, let me go to that slide where we have the number of tags. Uh, this is the semantic approach. Yeah, of course, this could be a cause by the, that we don't can't, can't store the geometric information with the Wikidata object, so we have to somehow describe what it looks like or something. But I think um, this is way more information than just this geometric description of the object. So I think that can be one cause, but I think there are more to it than just, just that reason. Yeah. Thank you. I don't see other questions in Venueless. Anything from the audience? Yes. Hi, thank you very much for the talk. Um, one of my clients is the French railway company, SNCF, and we've been working with them to map the, all the train stations of the Paris area in OSM, but also uh, we worked on uh, Wikidata to link both in uh, OpenStreetMap and Wikidata, and something that is stopping us is the license. I know it's a boring uh, topic, but it's very important. Um, in the OSM community, we feel that uh, the ODBL uh, license is quite important because of, of the values that it brings. And uh, in Wikidata, the CC0 license stop us to create like um, tools, automated tools to import the, da the data. And uh, this is really something that is stopping um, the community, uh, the, the two communities from uh, merging. Um, so we are not going to solve the, the license issue today, but I would like to have your, um, maybe your perception and on, on how you manage that, you manage the, this, this uh, license issue. And um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, so I, I guess it would be interesting to see how you are integrating the two data sources or, how, or what, we, what you're doing with it, because I think the linking can actually be a solution for that. So if we don't need to incorporate the information from one source into the other, and we just link from one to the other, then that is the solution for license problems, right? So um, we, 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 we're not incorporating one into the other, but we can do it on our client, so to say. But I guess I, I understand the problem, yes, of course. And um, um, I haven't had that challenge yet, fortunately. Um, but yeah, I think uh, it would be interesting to see um, how that can be solved or how that can be gone forward with. But um, just a quick note, I mean, France, uh, I, this is a random selection, human random selection of, of, of countries that fitted on the, on the graph. And France is mapped, uh, and France is, well, uh, I'm not, a, I, I, we can have a look at the linking, but at least in the amount of data, uh, France uh, does quite well. Um, it's quite in, in line with India, which is also very well um, in the amount of data. Thank you. There was a question exactly on the license incompatibility issue, so I consider this as addressed, not the license incompatibility, but the question, of course. <laughs> what are the key benefits of the linkage between knowledge graphs and OSM? As I already said, uh, like there are some tools, of course, uh, which answer a uh, question, like uh, give me uh, five top, uh, like closest uh, five restaurant to, um, Florence Duomo or something, right? It's already there, but uh, the 
the amount of coding which goes behind it, it's much more as compared to in uh, knowledge graph. So in knowledge graphs, you just write a query and you have one function as a distance which calculates the distance between uh, the coordinates and it gets easier. Um, there are many, many applications of these uh, knowledge graphs and if we have the sources uh, uh, together, then I think the uh, information retrieval uh, and the uh, question answering system, which are kind of the components which uh, Semantic Web is also like uh, dealing with, uh, they can be answered uh, pretty well, I think, with this integration, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We have a last question. Nice and inspiring work. Could you talk a bit more, but I had not, not too long, because yeah. we have one minute left, about the potential application of your KG, uh, OSM and Wikidata. Maybe this could support OSM question answering system in global scale. Uh, I mean, uh, if you go to the World KG uh, website, I would just uh, <laughs> advertising. <laughs> so then uh, we also have uh, some applications which we have a, like a Sparkle endpoint which you can access it, and you can see like how we have uh, used the OSM data directly into Knowledge Graph uh, to a better answer questions. So there are some example queries as well which you can try to solve. And yeah, if you maybe that can help. Uh, in, yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. And of course, feel free to approach the speakers for additional question or information. Thank you.